This week's teaching challenge comes from Holland Park School in West London, where a rain-soaked Tuesday morning sees the arrival of a wildlife TV star. Michaela Strachan has spent nearly 20 years bringing animal and conservation issues to children across Britain. Michaela now lives in South Africa, but has returned to Blighty, accompanied by her 18-month-old son, <laughs> to take the teaching challenge. The species Scholasticus Michaela will be teaching are the GCSE religious education class normally taken by Sahara Khan. Something, something that humans can't control, it's beyond our control. So something like an earthquake... I remember when I was at school there was a guy that came in to do talks about WWF, his name was Cyril Littlewood. Um, and he did this whole talk and we all got really inspired, particularly me and my best mate Bryony. And afterwards he said, is there anyone that would like to get more involved? And me and my friend Bryony put our hands up and said, yeah, yeah, we'll get involved. And uh, we went with him while he did photographs of us studying flora and fauna and looking at wildlife and plants and things um, for a little leaflet for WWF at the time. I think teaching is quite a scary thing. I've never done it before, so um, it'll be interesting, but I'm looking forward to it. And so hopefully we can get a really good debate and discussion going with the kids. I think I'll just smile at them and hope for the best, because I'm not very good at discipline. I've got my little 18-month-old, and uh, discipline's not something I'm finding that easy. I just find things quite funny, generally. So, And naughty children, I, I tend to find quite funny, so um, I shall have to look very stern. Before her first time teaching experience, Michaela is briefed by Miss Khan. How are you feeling about the lesson? Well, I'm a bit nervous about it actually, because I've never taught a lesson before. And so I, I think the hardest thing for me is to know where to pitch it. They're, they're a really bright group and they? they're really, really nice. And I think what you find is with your, you know, your opening questions, you'll find that the discussion will lead you somewhere and you'll, you'll know where to put, uh, pitch it. Do you know what you're going to discuss with them today? I want to try and get them to discuss conservation and environmental issues because um, I think it's really important that children understand that it's, it's not a black and white issue often, it's, it's a complicated issue, but they need to know all the facts before they make opinions. And I do find that kids generally have very strong opinions and they don't know the facts. Yeah, that's right, I, I probably agree with you. They don't really look at it until year 11, but you'll find that they're really open-minded about the whole thing and probably enjoy talking about it and they'll have lots to say. Are they, are they good at discussing generally, these kids? Yeah, they, they do really enjoy it. They, I think what they'll appreciate more is your experience and all the stuff that you've done and trying to relate to that. Although I'll try and be passionate, I'm not, I'll try really hard not to sort of influence them with, with my beliefs about what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, but I think you'll find that actually they tend to not agree with adults anyway. So I think it'll be more, I think they'll always try to do the opposite of what you want to say, but what they'll want to hear is what you think about it and why you think about it. And what, what do you do about discipline? Because I'm not, I'm not very good at <laughs> discipline. I actually think the more engaged they are, you'll know, you, you have very few discipline problems. Okay. This group of kids, you don't ever have it with. They're such a lovely class. But I do tend to find the more engaged they are, the more focused they are on what you're talking about, they don't have time to think about being naughty in the classroom. OK. You can give me marks out of ten when I finish. I will do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll be absolutely fine, though. <laughs> As the class get ready for their celebrity visitor, Sahara takes up position next door to monitor the lesson. This is where I get a bit nervous. I hope they're nice. Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you all? Hi. Um, hopefully you know who I am. Do you all know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> who am I? Michaela. Michaela. That's right. No, um, I do wildlife programmes and so my class that I'm going to give you is about car mechanics. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Hands up if you're interested in wildlife. And what about, are you all interested in conservation as well and in environmental issues and animal welfare and that sort of thing? Yeah. 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 Okay, well, the thing I want you to go out of this lesson thinking about is that if you have a strong opinion about something, you have to know a few facts about it and you have to have thought it through. So the thing I'm going to be talking to you about today is hunting. Who is anti-hunting? Who is for hunting? What about you at the back? Who's, what's your name? Gabriel. Gabriel, are you for or against? I don't have an opinion on it. Oh, well, great then. Hopefully by the end of this you'll have an opinion. So if all of you are anti-hunting, 
Do you think hunting is acceptable at any time, in any circumstances? What do you think? I'm a vegetarian, but at the same time I can see why people might think that it's okay because it could just be how nature's meant to be. Okay, good, yeah. Anyone else got an opinion? Yeah? Right, um, say hunting or, you know, killing animals to get food and stuff, I, I guess we sort of have to do that, but hunting is like, like with elephants when they take their tusks, like, that's, that's not cool. Okay, well that's brought up a lot of good points, actually. Yeah, that's really good. She's introduced the topic, she hasn't patronised them, she's been very clear about what her expectations are. Do you all know what indigenous means? Do, does anybody know what that means, indigenous people? So that means people that live in an area and they live off the land. So do you think it's okay if indigenous people hunt animals if they're going to use those animals for themselves as food? What do you think about that? So yeah, pretty much a majority, and I think I'd agree with you on that. It is. What do most of you think about sport hunting? For instance, fox hunting. Boy, is it the front of quiet, Valmy? Well, I think that going and killing an animal for yourself is kind of wrong because you don't know how long the animal's lived, and you could be killing like a one-month-year-old thing. See, that? I like that. She's encouraging people at the front of the class to speak, so being picking on certain students, there's always some who'll be more quieter than others. You can buy meat from like supermarkets and stuff, even though they're also killing animals, but I, I think it's probably better to get it from the supermarket rather than kill it yourself. Why, why is that better than, than somebody that's going out and shooting an animal that lives in a, in a semi-wild environment and has a wilder life? Uh, actually, I feel kind of embarrassed because that was <laughs> no, but it's, stupid but thing to say. You see, that's the thing. That's the whole point, is a lot of people would instantly say that it's better to buy your meat in a supermarket. So that's because she's developing his point get him to think about actually wider conditions. I think that anybody who's willing to eat meat should be able to face the facts that they are killed. And I think, Maddie, as a vegetarian, you often have very different opinions. You can say, well, I don't think it's right for people to kill themselves, if you know if that makes sense. But um, I, I think, actually, no, that's, that's, that's staying with that point. Let's take this scenario then. In some places, experts say there are too many of one particular animal, let's say elephants. To manage those elephants, we have to cull them, which means they have to kill some of them in a managed way. They decide to then give the right to come and kill that elephant to the highest bidder, but then that money will go back into conserving the elephants that are left and the whole environment. This makes it a bit more interesting, giving them a scenario to react to. Kids, students always respond to that, hearing about different situations around the world. It would be the same as if you were a human and you, uh, some ruler of a land said, oh, there's too many people here and I think I should get rid of them. You see, that opens up a very interesting point and that opens up a big conservation topic. And, you know, it is us that actually need to be culled. Yeah, Gabriel? Couldn't they just move the animals? It would have been nice to hear more about Jack's um, earlier point about whether or not humans do have more value than animals. And if they do have more value, where does, why do we attribute more values to humans? A lot of the time they do try to move animals. But again, conservation is expensive. And to move animals, particularly if you're talking about moving elephants, is an expensive business. And sometimes it doesn't work because they have such strong links with where they've been moved from. It could be the excellent central heating system but Michaela is starting to lose some of her class. Now, another scenario I wanted to ask you what you thought was if an area that had nothing in it turned into a hunting farm, a few animals will suffer on that farm, but a lot of animals will gain. So she's given them another scenario, giving them some choices to actually think about. In every situation, something is going to suffer, whether it's like small suffering or great suffering. So you have to kind of consider whether there's going to be more bad than good in the situation. Maddie, that is exactly, I think, the point, isn't it? In conservation, there really isn't a perfect answer. It's a compromise. It's about finding the best compromise that you can. So have I made you all think more deeply about that particular subject, about hunting? Yeah. yeah. Do you all feel exactly the same though that you're anti it? Yeah. yeah. Anyone change their opinion? Great. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, and that's a nice way of, you know, sum, summing, up, uh, summing up the discussion, really asking them whether or not they've changed their mind about things. Is there anything that anybody wants to ask me? Have you ever witnessed 
any hunting or, or anything like that? I've seen a lot of very, very cruel things. Fortunately, I've never seen an animal die from a bullet. Charlie? Have you ever met an animal that's not on the brink of extinction? Just recently, I've, I've got back from it, um, trips to Borneo and we've been filming orangutans. Because their numbers are declining so quickly and their habitat is being destroyed at such a vast rate, you know, they are on the brink of extinction. And I just think if we let beautiful animals that everybody loves disappear, then it doesn't hold much hope for some cricket or frog or whatever that maybe doesn't, you know, get such good press. Well, I think that's brought our class to an end. We've had a really good discussion and you've all been amazing at thinking things through because you can't just do conservation by letting your emotions take over because it is a practical issue. Do you think I've done my job? Yeah. <laughs> well, you were certainly a great class to teach. Thank you very much. Bye. Well, I quite enjoyed that, actually. <laughs> that wasn't as difficult as I thought it was going to be, but I actually really enjoyed it, and it was interesting to hear their opinions. Michaela leaves the classroom and joins Miss Cam for a debrief. That was an amazing lesson. I really enjoyed watching you. Thank you. That was very sweet of you to say. <laughs> no, they really, really responded to what you were saying. I think the best bits were when you spoke about your personal experiences and what you saw because they were able to feed off of that yeah. and give you what they thought about that. I thought it was interesting that none of them were into fox hunting. Now, if I'd gone into a school in the countryside, then there probably would have been more people that would have been for, for fox hunting, because that's what they know, than, than against. I found it really interesting that despite the fact that you were against fox hunting, you still gave them the other side and said, you know, this is why someone may, may be interested in it, may like it. I really like to see with kids, explore their opinions. Yeah. That is what class is all about, isn't it? Getting those opinions and discussing things and coming up with your opinion at the end of a lesson. Well, you've obviously taught those kids. They were really, really nice kids and I oh, enjoyed teaching them. So okay. I'd give them well, at least nine and a half out of ten. What would you give I, me? I think you were, I, I do, I did say that I thought you were amazing and then I would have given you a ten out of ten. I really, Aww. I actually really enjoyed watching you and I think I learned quite a lot just from watching you. What I wanted them to get from you was the experience and really what you're passionate about and I think they totally got that. Kids. So thank, thank you. you very much for coming in and giving them that experience. Thanks for giving me good kids. <laughs> I thought the lesson was good because we had um, Michaela in who um, knows what she's talking about and she's had a lot of experiences of what's gone on in the wildlife. I really enjoyed it because it's definitely something that I'm interested in. When she asked us what we thought about hunting and then she told us like well actually what do you think about it like this and it was really strange because we are like, oh. Now, I thought those kids were really great at discussing and forming opinions, and I really hope that my little 18-month-old will be as good as that when he grows up. Talking of which, has anyone seen him? Sure, I came in with a pram, a grandmother and a baby, and I can't see any of them. I think I'd better go and find them. Bye. <laughs>